Hello everyone. Um, I'm Vincent Rodi and I'm very happy to be able to talk about multidimensional arrays today and to talk about fancy C++. Um, the project I will describe has been the result of many collaborations and uh, it, I will try to give an overview of what we have done to simplify and to maybe give a direction on how we may implement uh, linear algebra in, uh, in C++. So this talk will be about linear algebra, will be about templates, will be about C++20, um, about writing language within language, um, all fun stuff. So uh, I will first give uh, a small introduction on the topic. I will, I will try to be brief. Uh, then about I will speak about the current standardization effort on linear algebra that has been that is going on in, in C++. And then I will I will try to talk about the possible directions to for the work that is being done and how we could have both at the same time uh, high performance and things that are very easy to write. And then I will dig down into, into like very detailed problems and there will be quite a lot of code and quite a lot of technical code, but uh, I hope everything will, will go well. So starting with the introduction, uh, I guess that if you are here, you are interested by uh, multidimensional arrays and in algebra uh, in a broader sense. And uh, as in algebra is basically everywhere into, uh, into computer programming, um, I think it's not surprising that we have, we may need in code like 1D arrays, 2D arrays, and, uh, and 3D arrays. Uh, 1D arrays are sometimes called vectors, even though vectors in mathematics may be a kind of a different object uh, because a 1D thing, uh, 1D array is, can represent um, an array of coordinates while a vector in mathematics have to ensure that certain constraints are, are verified when you change, for example, the base. And same thing for tensors. Tensors are used in programming to, to talk about multidimensional arrays, uh, while in mathematics they refer to a very specific type of objects uh, with, certain, with certain properties. So that being said, in the rest of the talk, I will talk about multidimensional arrays and I will to not dig into the, these problems of, of vocabulary. So, we have these objects, and these objects are used in many, many different areas. Uh, one of them, for example, is video games. Uh, when you want to, when you want to implement uh, anything that has to do with graphics, and or anything that has to do with a physics engine, um, that may be very useful to have vectors and matrices, or at least multidimensional arrays. The other um, one another area where linear algebra can be very useful is science. And uh, on my on my side, uh, I am working in astrophysics and in mathematics, and I'm trying to use a set of algorithms called uh, optimal transport in order to see how we can guess the initial conditions uh, to form, like we take. Um, cosmological simulations of formation of galaxies, of galaxy formations, and then we try to use computational optimal transport to see where they were before in time. And if that works, then that gives us insights when we will apply them to real data to understand what has been going on in the past. And to do that, uh, contrary to video games where the most needed are generally very small arrays and you need to have a lot of them and have them very fast. In my case, I may have up to six dimensional dynamic arrays with billions of elements. So even though the constraints are a little bit different uh, than for video games, all of that uh, are kind of the same thing in mathematics, uh, basically uh, vectors, matrices, and how do we uh, operate with them as fast as possible? 
So linear algebra, as you know, is everywhere. We could find many other examples. And uh, I will stop the introduction here because I don't think it's necessary to, um, to highlight why it's useful to, to do that. So that being said, in C++20, we still don't have a standard way to in the standard library to deal with multidimensional arrays. Um, stand, a stood matrix is a long-term goal that we may have, but for now, even though a lot of, of other languages have that, we don't have it in, in C++. However, there has been, over the last few years, quite a lot of effort done uh, in that direction. One, one item of this effort has been the work on MD span and, and related uh, and related things. So MD span is a non-owning multidimensional array reference. Uh, let's say you have a block of memory that a linear block of memory, and you are interested in seeing that block of memory as a multidimensional thing. So that that the functionality MD span is trying to provide. And uh, related to this proposal, there has been uh, MD array proposed recently uh, that kind of extend that to um, to deal with memory allocation and everything. So that's one thing, and that's probably the most advanced proposal so far in that direction. Uh, another another thing is our papers on linear algebra in general. So the committee has been reviewing papers about what would be needed by the by the community, what is needed by application. And, uh, and there has been a proposal that tried to focus on a higher level view of things. Uh, the long-term goal being to be able to have a standard matrix in the, in the C++ standard, as in the vast majority of other programming languages. Another effort has been also uh, quite recent, um, trying to bring the BLAS, the basic linear algebra subprograms, which are very efficient routines to do linear algebra operation to the C++. These, these routines have been, test, have been tested and optimized for years, and we still don't have ways to, to deal with them in, in C++. So there has been um, uh, investigation in that, in that direction. And finally, there has been also some papers um, different uh, requirements or some trying to investigate uh, the proper vocabulary to use for this for this object in order to to standardize something that would be reliable and solid as we like to do in in C++. Empty span uh, is for now the name that is that is used. However, several competing names were um, we are given uh, like psi array, numeric array, VLA array, multidimensional array, multidim array, MD array, which is the, the pattern MD that has been uh, kept for now, and multi array. The problem with multi array is that we have already multi set and multi map in C, and in that context, multi means a different thing. Some alternatives to that uh, about the how to name these these objects uh, would be to use ND as it exists already in, in Python. In Python. Um, and this would make sense because these objects are in practice n-dimensional objects and n in that case is finite and is known at compile time. And these, uh, this is how these objects are, are sometimes called in, in math. The other approach would be to name the things high pair array or with an underscore not, because when we generalize things in higher dimensional space in, in mathematics, um, we sometimes use the hyper prefix to, to, to call the, the result. Like we have hypercubes, hyperspheres, and higher dimensional matrices are, are sometimes called hyper matrices. But for, for now, the current proposal uh, focus on has taken MD array, but this might change before standardization. 
I personally would prefer that it would change, but, but we'll see. So that being said, handling linear algebra in C++ is a very long-term and very complicated task. And what the committee has been, the, the approach that has been that has been investigated by the committee is a standardization by layer. By standardizing first uh, the most simple pieces and, and then building stuff on, on top of it. So we would start by non owning reference to arrays like MD span. Then there would be a brick of the BLAS, for example, with basic algorithm and operation. On top of that, we could build owning arrays dealing with all the problems of memory location. Then on top of that, we could have a library of overloaded operators so that one could write my matrix one times my matrix two, and the operator times would do the right thing, uh, the right type of project. And on top of that, in the long term, we could even add geometric, geometric aspects. Um, to deal with vectors and, and spaces and, and stuff like that. But this talk will we focus on the first layer and uh, and see how we can make that how can try to make that as as simple, powerful, and um, as as possible using C plus plus twenty. But before going further, we need to take a look at what is currently in the in this proposal to see what are the different types of objects how they interact between each other how the things are specified to understand what the empty span is how do we look to a zone of memory and interpret that as a multi-dimensional uh, thing so the first thing the proposal described is uh, a class a, a template class uh, called extends, and it takes as um, as a viadic uh, list of template parameter a uh, list of integers. Then there are layouts to specify layout mapping policies to specify how the dimensions are when when the user write code how the subscript subscript operator is mapped to the internal memory representation dealing with row major or column major problems for example then there is accessors that describe how to access in practice an element of memory or a group of elements um, in, uh, in in memory and, uh, and then uh, the other thing, the last thing is a basic MD span that groups all these elements together uh, with an element type, for example, double, int, or whatever, then the extents to specify the shape, the layout policy, and the accessor policy. And for simple use cases, um, the basic MD span um, is renamed MD span when the only thing that matters is the the type element and the shape the shape of the thing um, as a remark you can ask questions during during the code talk and at the end of each part i will i will answer them so don't hesitate to ask questions and i will process them uh, at the end of each part of the talk so that being said um, if we look closer to what a next tense class is, so as I said before, it takes a list of integers as, as a, a valid list of integers as, as a template parameter. It defines uh, different constructors, uh, some of them, nothing very surprising here, some of them may construct an extent from another extent with uh, different parameters. Uh, there is assignment and an assignment operator, but nothing, nothing very surprising. Here. And then there are different types of observer. There is an observer to 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 get the rank, the number of dimension, the multi-dimensional array we have, and because these ranks can be either static, specified at compile time, for example, I want this dimension of my array to be fixed and to and its value to be five. 
or they can be dynamic. In that case, the the dimension the dimension could be resized during during um, during the course of, of the program. So there is a wrong dynamic function to get what the number of dynamic axes are, and then there is an extent without an s function uh, that takes an index to query the size along a particular axis, along a particular dimension. Uh, so for example, if you have uh, an array, a multidimensional array uh, with three dimension, extent zero will return the size along the first axis, uh, extent one along the second axis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And finally, there are some, um, some exposition only uh, parts to store the dynamic the dynamic extents. Um, then there are the layouts. So layouts are a way to specify the mapping between the dimensions and the and the way things are are stored internally. So lay so layout layout left uh, is so we have a layout left, left, layout right, extra, extra. The layout left this, uh, declares an internal class called mapping with several constructors and assignment. Nothing surprising here. It takes uh, an extent as to be built. And then the, it defines ways to access the extent. Uh, and to access uh, specific things uh, given a set of indices. And then there are ways to query the, the way things are represented in memory to ask whether um, things are unique, contiguous, or, or strided in memory to have a feeling of yeah, how things are, are stored and how we may operate in them. And the mapping stores the extent it has been given at, at construction. And using that way of specifying things, it's, it's possible to, uh, to define all kinds of mapping between, the, between the, the, the API and the way things are, are stored in memory. Then there is the accessor. So accessor is just it's a very simple class to access things um, to access things in, in memory uh, and to access uh, different elements and uh, so either one element or different uh, elements at, at the same time. And finally, the empty span that combines all these things together. So it defines uh, a few types. Uh, then it has some constructors that takes a pointer as an input and um, dynamic extents or a mapping type or a pointer, a mapping type, an accessor, etc. Et yeah. The only thing to remember here is that it combines all these all these elements um, to in a view, in a multi-dimensional view uh, and things. And there are some assignment operators. Again, nothing surprising here. And operators to access the, the elements. So there is an operator here to, to get a reference with that takes only one index. And there, are, there is an operator that takes several indices to access, to access the elements. And there is also a version that takes an array of indices uh, to access the elements specified by the different indices in the n dimension of the of the MD span. And finally, in always in the in the, still in the same class, there is a way to uh, to access the accessor and to access the different property, different internal properties of the of the MD span, basically copy, copying information uh, that are handled by either the extent, the layout policy, or, or access or policy. Um, and I think that's 
that's it for the for the most part. So if we summarize what's interesting and the like the, the main contribution to the design proposal um, is has been to define an API to propose and span as the product of an element type, an extent that describes the shape of the multi-dimensional multi things we are looking at, a layout policy to specify the mapping, and an accessor policy to specify how individual and configured elements can be accessed in memory. Um, and that is a huge effort like, to be able to to divide the parameter space in these in, and to conceptify the parameter space in these four things. It has been quite a lot of effort from from the authors. Um, and honestly, I find their their work really amazing so far, and it's very I'm very excited by by what will follow. However, the as one of the lowest uh, layer of thing, uh, this proposal uh, has some simplification. It is non-only, meaning that all the problems of uh, declaring memory and to allocating memory are not handled by this. And it's not a problem, but it just means that for an empty array, it would be necessary to, um, to design and to see how um, how allocators will interact with the already defined four parameters. And it has been designed for continuous memory storage. For now, there is no, there is no multidimensional iterators and there, there is no way of, of basically iterating on, on these things. So given the current state of the proposal, the way one may declare, may declare an ND span is the, what is shown on the second line of the proposal. So, so the ND span of the element type like double and then the extents where every dimension can be either a number or dynamic extent. However, dynamic extent is defined as um, minus one and this may cause problem um, because this is a very old school thing, old school way of, of doing things. And, um, and that have some risks. Uh, that, yeah. And this syntax is, I must say, pretty heavy. Like when you have three dimensions, it's okay. But when you start to have a lot of dimensions and when you have a code that deal with a lot of different types of arrays with different dimensions. Specifying things in that way is uh, requires a lot of characters to be typed and not very easy to, to read. And in the early age of the proposal, um, the, the team behind the proposal wanted to allow a different, a different, inter a different way of specif specifying thing as proposed by P0 uh, 332, a proposal called Relaxed Incomplete Multidimensional Array Type Declaration. And if we had that, we could specify things in the most, in the more elegant way uh, to describe what dimensions are fixed and what dimensions are, um, are dynamic. For now, in C++, only the first one of the two is allowed. And, but the second one, you cannot have alternating uh, fixed and dynamic dimension. The dynamic dimension has to be has to be in the first uh, in the, the first one. The library evolution working group in the committee was largely in favor of this syntax. However, the evolution working group was against against this language change because it had unintended side effects uh, in different areas of the language, and to just allow this functionality by a core language change, uh, this could trigger suddenly a lot of complete unintended problems. Another problem was that um, was the one of zero sized array, because it's currently not allowed in, in standard C and standard C++ to specify zero as, as a dimension. 
However, stood array allows zero dimensional array by combining a special case. And it could be uh, for people who do mathematics um, as a generalization, it would be really nice to have a way to specify that uh, that we are dealing with Darrow with a zero dimensional array uh, along one axis. And even if P0 52 was standardized, we still would have no way of, of doing that. So that being said, the point of this talk is to focus on how we can obtain, um, obtain specify the shape of my multidimensional arrays in, in a nice way and a compact way and a way that would be readable and really and that would be easy to manipulate. The goal is to obtain something that is generic so that we can cover as much as possible of the parameter space. Something that is high performance, both in terms of computing time and memory, and something that is very expressive, that is easy to understand, easy to read, and easy to write in a concise way. So regarding the question, uh, I may take some of them at the end of the talk, but some of the questions that has been asked are, what are the discussion between multidimensional arrays and tensors? So that's a, a tensor has to ensure that some properties uh, are conserved, while a multidimensional array, like a tensor, is fundamentally a geometric object, and we may look at this call at the coordinates of the tensor, uh, the coordinate of the tensor in a particular base. Uh, is a multidimensional array. Same thing for a vector. A vector, we may look at the coordinates, but the coordinates of the vector is not the vector itself. Uh, why are the completed extents parameter PTRDFT instead of size t? So that's a long debate. Uh, if you if you don't agree, write to the committee. I that's a detail of implementation. Uh, having just it seems not enough. What if we want to specify alignment? Uh, so I'm not. A, I didn't write the MBSAN proposal, but I think this is handled by the layout policy. Um, this must be checked because again, I'm I'm a simple user of the of MD sign. I, I'm not an implementer. Um, why do we have special extents name for what is basically some kind of array? Uh, because of the thing I. I I explained before, which is the fact that uh, we may have to, we may want to specify um, to specify dynamic dimension and static dimension. Iter question six: How do you create iterators of the arrays? For now, there is no uh, multidimensional iterators, including the proposal. Um, when traversing question eight, when traversing multidimensional arrays, can you preserve the concept of left, right? I think so. Um, then when you traverse the material array, do you foresee using spacing curve as a mechanism for efficiently traversing the array? That would be very interesting. Uh, I don't know if that can be currently specified in terms of layout, but once we have multidimensional iterators in the file in the in the in the long future, this would definitely be something that could be uh, that could be um, very interesting for to operate on these arrays. Uh, for now, it's just um, like MD span are just views on, on contiguous memory uh, spaces. Um, and I think that's all the question I will take for, for now. So again, we are, so we want a nice way to specify shapes of multidimensional arrays. Um, so we want something generic, performant, and expressive. And the problem is that it's very hard to have the same, the same, uh, have everything at the same time. And in that context, I would define software architecture as the way of balancing and compromising between the generosity, the performance, and the expressivity. So if in that regard, it's interesting to, I think this way of looking at things is interesting to understand why C++ still has no standard matrix in, in, in 2020. When people focus on only, only, only one axis, 
for example, focusing on expressivity, uh, the problem collapses and it's far, far, far easier to, to solve. And for example, in a high level language, if you don't care that much, you may not care that much about performance or, uh, or generosity. And this may be hidden in lower layers of, of your language. Focusing on two axes of the optimization space uh, still lead to a reasonable level of complexity. For example, if you only focus on performance and expressivity and leave the generosity alone by only providing one single type, it's relatively, it's relatively easy to do. But when one wants to address the three axes at the same time, this is what makes the design a real challenge. And in C++ in the standard library, we are aiming for these three things at the same time. And this is one of the main reasons, I think, that we still have no standard metrics in 2020. Ideally, if everything was possible, what we would like for a, an n-dimensional array, and specifically, what would we like to specify the dimension of uh, n-dimensional array? In terms of expressivity, we would like something. We would like something very concise, uh, where you could specify in a concise way the dimensions that are fixed, the dimensions that are that are dynamic in arbitrary orders, and everything would be easy to read, easy to write, and easy to understand. In terms of performance, we are looking for something that would have no overhead compared to handcrafted solution uh, that would be optimized and designed for specific scenarios. Um, it exists, some libraries exist for, um, for multi-dimensional arrays of, of rank two, of rank one, of rank three. Here we want to maintain the highest possible level of performance regardless of the, of the rank of the dim uh, n-dimensional array. And in terms of generosity, we like to have arbitrary more layouts, arbitrary indexing schemes, arbitrary finite trunks from one to a lot, combinations of static and dynamic dimensions, and zero sized case. So the challenge is to find a way to have all these things at the same time, uh, expressivity, performance, and generosity. And uh, that is what the SAR library is looking for. Thankfully, we now have C++ 20. And when people doing a lot of template programming uh, realized what C++ 20 was giving to them, they probably saw something like this. I know people who saw something like this. And in the meantime, they were like, hey, did anyone notice the, how this could go wrong? And I must admit that I was one of these people. Because C++ 20 is bringing something that is highly, highly, highly useful to do the kind of thing um, I, I described before. It basically bring an atomic weapon to do that. And this is the content of the proposal P0732, which brings in class types in non type template parameters. Before C20, it was only possible to provide um, integers or pointers or arrays, I think, as template parameters. Um, in C20, minus some restrictions, it will be possible to provide arbitrary objects as a template parameter. And this is extremely powerful. Uh, I see no question for that part. So I will just go to the, to the next one, where I will describe how to how can I actually achieve a concise way to specify the dimensions of arrays. Uh, EDSL stands for Embedded Domain Specific Language. And this is basically the key. We will define a language within C++ to a language specifically designed to specify dimensions of arrays and shapes of arrays. 
What if I told you that the following was perfectly possible in C++ 20? So this is very close to some of the interface, uh, some of the expressivity example we, we have seen before. And this, uh, this is actually possible, thanks to C++ 20. So in the first one, we specify uh, n-dimensional array of type double, and then we specify the shape. And it's compact, it's easy to read. We have fixed dimension, and we have combination of fixed dimension and dynamic dimension. Or we could even think of different way of specifying things, uh, for example, with this contents uh, version, where we have the template parameter of the contents, that is the element type, and again, the shape of the array. And this is perfectly, as I said before, this is perfectly possible in Cerberus First 20. So if we want to achieve that, um, we one way of approaching the problem is to reverse engineer what we want to achieve. So when we see that shape cannot be a type, because a type, there is no way of calling the subscript operator on a type. So shape has to be a variable. Therefore, empty array should be a class template of the form class auto. Shape should be a variable of a type with operator parentheses and operator subscript. And these operators should return a value of the same time, of the same type as shape, so that it can be called again recursively until all dimensions are specified. And for the contents version, same thing, except this time, contents cannot be a type. It has to be a variable template, not a variable, but, um, but the variable template. In that form, ND array should be of the form template auto. Contents should be a variable of type uh, with the true operators, and same thing as before. And if we have that, then we have this the short syntax we are looking for. And this is where we introduce expression template. template. Expression template is the way template wizards used to optimize um, linear algebra operations. But now that we can pass any kind of object into as template parameters, it's possible to inject templates, to inject expression templates as templates. For our for the case we are looking for, shape will build an expression template, and the result of the expression template will be then injected as a template parameter. And it takes doing that takes embedded domain specific language to a whole new level. So how to do that? The first thing to do is to create two markers, two tags to process the operators that are being called and shape. One for the function call operator, one for the subscripting operator. Nothing surprising here. The args will be used to specify how many these operators, how many arguments these operators are taking. Then we have the shaper class template. The role of the shaper is to, is to be the type of the shape, since shape is a variable. So it's a class, it's a template, it's a class template that will have all the preceding operations as the template parameter. So it has a constructor that takes the preceding, uh, that takes a shaper and a new possible uh, index to be called, to be built recursively. And it has some data parameter. Nothing surprising so far. However, it has two operators, as we said before, one operator to build dynamic dimension and one operator to build static dimension. So the operator parenthesis will build a different shaper, adding the tag function call operator at the end of the operators that have been processed before. Um, we also may want to provide a way to specify a default size for dynamic dimensions. 
And so therefore, the operator um, parenthesis may take um, a parameter to specify that. And then the subscripting operator would do the same. It would build another shaper from the existing shaper. Then we have a way to access the rank, the number of, di of already existing dimension, a way to query, uh, to query the parameter at a given position, and a way to convert the parameters that have been already passed to an array uh, and to build an array from another array, basically. The most important part in that slide is the fact that we have two main operators, parentheses and subscript, and they build a shaper adding the tag of the next operation to come. And then we declare a shape instance of type shaper. And we declare indexing helper to help with constant time indices. So the type of the index is an index constant, and then index is just a variable template of type index constant. That's, that's it. Then we want to have a dynamic way of specifying extent and a static way of specifying extent. So the first thing to come is an indexed dynamic extent. So we have two versions of it. We have a version with no default dimension, and we have a version that takes a, default, a defaulted dimension uh, as, as, the, as a parameter. And these, um, these extents are indexed by their rank. And they have an operator subscript taking the rank as, um, as a variable. We have the same thing for static extent, uh, except the static extent always take a value, the value at compile time. And then we build a class, a helper to, to build the things from the indices. So we specialize this indexed extent maker so that for a function call operator, it corresponds to an indexed dynamic extent. For a function call operator with one parameter, it corresponds to an indexed dynamic extent with a default dimension. And for a subtracting operator, it corresponds to the indexed static extent. And then we, we have an alias to make that thing works better and works nicely called make indexed extent. From that, we built an extent policy that will specify, um, that will specify uh, whether dimensions of a certain rank of a certain rank are dynamic or static. So um, the extent policy, the thing to, to see here is that the extent policy inherits from the extent. The extent being the indexed extent um, that uh, associates the dynamic or static status with the rank of the, of the extent. And we create helper to help building these things, uh, and especially a make extent policy that takes. Um, that basically converts, will convert a shape into a sequence of classes that could be then injected and inherited from the extent policy. Then we have the notion of an extender to specify at runtime how a dimension will be resized. So an extender. Um, so we have this concept of indexed extender that will take an index as an input and that will uh, as a template parameter and that will take a size so that the dimension along a particular rank will be resized with a given uh, with a given number. And then we have extenders so that we can resize several dimensions at the same time. 
An extender is just a group of indexed extends. Um, nothing very fancy here. The extenders, in the same way extend inherits from individual extent, extenders inherit from indexed extent. And finally, we have our basic ND array uh, with our extend policy. And because some dimensions have to be specified when the, when the object is built, then a basic ND array takes a list of extenders at, at runtime. And this is, um, of course, this basic ND array could have a lot of different functions, but here, this is the most basic example. And if we have all of that, then by combining all these things together, we may write something like this, uh, where we have an ND array of shape three, dynamic four, dynamic with initialized at two, and a static dimension of three. Constructed by specifying that the extent along the first, the dimension of rank one, is initialized at five. So in total, we have along dimension zero, we have a static size of three. Along dimension one, we have a dynamic size with initial value is given in the constructor using the extend mechanism, a static size of four, a dynamic size Dimension three is a dynamic size with the default initial value of two, and dimension four is a static size of three. So one of the questions is what's a default size for dynamic extent? Why we can just use minus one for dynamic extent? So the dynamic extent uh, currently dynamic extent exists in the standard uh, as of C plus plus twenty, and um, it's it's equal to minus one. The problem with that is that it limits, um, it gives no way of specifying a dynamic uh, default dimension. And as we see after, it, it will be, uh, it's kind of limited. Um, and from the type system's perspective, using a special number for default case in something that is really, template heavy is a bad idea. So given the time, I will skip the next part um, and I will uh, and I will directly, I will summarize the next part basically by saying that handling, because extends, uh, the problem with extends is that because all dimension, when all dimensions are static, extend just, can just be an integer sequence and it works, it works nicely. When it's dynamic only, then extents can just be a runtime array that stores the different, uh, the different extents uh, given at, at runtime. But when there is an, when both are mixed, then it becomes complicated if we want to optimize it, especially if we want to optimize the memory footprint so that only the dynamic dimensions are stored. If we want to optimize um, runtime access along a particular dimension, and if we want to optimize compilation time. And for people interested in all these aspects, uh, I will leave the slide um, on, the, on the GitHub of the conference. Uh, this, is, this is quite technical, uh, but it's possible to achieve these goals so that the memory footprint is really low, the, we have perfect runtime access, uh, even with alternative dimensions. But doing it is may more tricky than, than one may think. So if the problem of extents is solved, then what's interesting is how what has been proposed in that, um, in that talk could be extended. So, the, because it's an embedded domain-specific language, uh, expression template could be used to pass additional parameters, additional layout information. Uh, for example, uh, operators could be used to uh, specify some kind of light layout uh, information. Symmetries along one particular dimension could be expressed 
as a part of the domain specific language. The parallelization information, for example, if we want to distribute the array uh, over the, along the, uh, the first dimension, and if we want to vectorize it on the last one, or if we want to vectorize it and send it on the GPU on the last one, um, we could, it would be possible to design a language using the same principle for an axis-based parallelization information. And doing that would make a, a very would be a very powerful way and concise way of specifying, of specifying a very complicated things. And finally, operation on shapes could also or could also be possible. All of that are just um, thoughts, but all of that is, is possible. Also, there is a, currently a proposal uh, to specify the international subscript operator. If we had that, we could, uh, including a zero parameter operator, uh, a zero parameter subscript operator, it could bring other opportunities to enrich the language and to have uh, the parentheses and the subscript operator um, useful for different purposes with different meanings. Also, I talked about static extent and dynamic extent, but and dynamic extent with a default dimension. But I think it would be worth investigating what could be the more generic um, concept for an extent. And I think a, a, a way to do that. Um, could be to divide, a suggestion would be to divide an extent between the following parameters. So a component that would be a static size under which the, 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 the size couldn't shrink. An initial size at construction, basically bringing the, when you build an object um, uh, that size, uh, when you, when you, build an object without specifying the, the size of a particular dimension, then the initial size will be taken. A threshold to specify when, how many elements can be stored um, on the stack and when the allocator is triggered, and a maximum number of elements that could be um, of specified at, at compile time, the, the thing can, can grow to. And this could be infinite. Um, in terms of these four parameters, for example, a static extent is just an extent where the four parameters are equal. A dynamic extent is, uh, is an extent where the minimum is set to zero, the maximum is set to infinity, the initial and threshold are set to zero so that as soon as one element is added, all the thing is allocated, the allocator is called and everything is, is on the heap. And a fixed extent um, where in that case, the initial size would be zero, max component, max element would be N and the threshold would be N. So that's, that's another Thing we could think of if we want to um, to generalize the and to go beyond what ha what has been presented. More generally, the generic MTTPs I think really open the Pandora's box uh, because being able to inject objects as template parameters in C++ twenty is a game changer to design language. And now, template classes really are mini compilers. It would be totally possible, and that's what I showed in that in that presentation, is that it's totally possible to use a template class and inject a media language uh, with its own grammar inside it. The next step to come, I think, to take it one level further, is the generosity regarding kinds. Because for now, and that has been proposed by P1985, because for now, it's impossible to have something that could be 
a type or a value. The developer has to specify what the template parameter will be. Uh, it can be a generic value, thanks to auto, but it cannot be a type or a value. Uh, P1985 proposed to standardize um, a way to specify something that could basically be anything, a value, a type, a template. And if this is brought to the C++, um, this will really make uh, the design of a DSL and mean language far easier for template developers. So the conclusion for this talk is that, um, as I said in the introduction, linear algebra is aware. It's very complex when we try to balance between generosity, performance, and expressivity. And that is why it's very complex to do in C++. There is an existing effort being done uh, with MDSPAN. However, currently, the way to specify the shape of arrays is requires a lot of characters. C++ 20 um, with arbitrary non-type template parameters allows to design embedded domain-specific language to specify multidimensional shapes in a much more concise manner. With that, it's possible to use what I call expression template template um, to inject the uh, expression template inside as a template parameter. And using that, it's possible to create what I, what I should before, uh, which is, I think, far more powerful than, than just trying to relax and complete uh, multinational type declaration or trying to use minus one as a parameter. Because this could be used to specify, as I showed, where to, uh, parallel, to parallelize, like where to do things along certain, certain dimensions. Mixing dynamic and static extents are particularly tricky to implement. Uh, there is a trick to do that, uh, which I call the log tuple trick. And people interested in that, which is a very useful pattern, can, can look at the, at the presentation. As I said, extending the DSL can go in many directions, bringing layout information, symmetries, parallelization, shape operation, all of that be brought into, into the, sm the small language I, I described. Um, if we want to go further, I think that interesting direction could be to conceptify the concept of an extent and so that we have a unique way of specifying when things are static, when things are dynamic, when things are resizable up to a certain dimension, when things are resizable regardless of the, of the maximum, when things are not resizable under a certain dimension. C++ 20 um, really is bringing something very interesting to, to EDSL design. And I think C++ 23, if a kind generosity is allowed in C++ 23, it will take it even further. Thank you for your attention. Uh, there, I know there has been a lot of material, but if you have questions, um, I, I will I will read them. And I want to thank especially Joel Falcou uh, because we are collaborating on the topic, and I think something very nice will. Uh, uh, we'll write something very nice to, to handle the, these kind of things. So one question is, what do you think could be an interface to compare shapes of different arrays for, compa for compatibility or particular operation? So that's, that's a good question. Um, I didn't investigate yet um, that particular question because I wanted my, my main purpose doing what I did was to show proof of concept, uh, to show that it was possible to do that. And it is possible to do what I had in mind. Now, now that we know it's possible, there will be the question of how to do that in, 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 a, in a nice way. And for now, and for now, I, I don't know. Um, 
do you think that, question two do you think that dynamic static extents mix can be separated into something more generally useful like partially static array um yes um yes and that's for people who are interested in uh, in, in, in that uh in that i would um look at the at the part that i didn't have time to show about the extent um uh, but yes that's a way of doing it but there are there are ways of doing that 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 are nicer and that scale better than a uh, partially static array um and so if you have other questions um I, I can take a uh, question offline uh, in, in the track. Uh, there is a question three, which is what timeline do you envision for getting stuff like this into the standard? No, I would hope um, uh, the question being no earlier than C26. I think actually this could be included in a revision of the MD span, at least the most basic version. Because once MD span is, is shipped, I think it will be cause uh, it will cause later um, incompatibility, incompatibility problems. Um, I think this is this is something that I want to look at with the author of MD span. Um, and uh, but I'm hoping that I'm hoping for a reduced version of it, um, just to specify static and dynamic version. I think this could be shipped in Cepos Plus 23, I hope. Thank you for your attention. And if you have questions, I will, I will take them offline. <laughs>